16-year-old Jonah is about to have electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, today in America. And we're doing bilateral electroplacement at 20%. Our cameras have been invited for the first time to film this controversial treatment on a child. Modern ECT is a very simple, safe, quick procedure. Some call for a total ban on ECT for children. It's traumatic brain injury, very much like somebody who's just endured a severe concussion. But Jonah's mother, Amy, is campaigning to allow more children like him to have the procedure. There's no doubt that ECT is the only reason that Jonah has any quality of life whatsoever. <laughs> so smarmy. Jonah is autistic, and before the treatment, he used to lash out and punch himself. Her nose is busted and was bleeding, and she was just constantly just punching herself. I was convinced that our love would heal her. ECT is rarely used in these cases, but some families feel it's their only option. I have to have hope that it's going to be a miracle for Sophia, because we need a miracle. So those were the first pictures that we ever got of her. So this was of um, Sophia in the orphanage? Yes. She was probably two years old right. in those. Oh. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on, Sophia. Hold on. In 2009, U.S. Army Intelligence Officer Chad Calvarasi and his wife Casey traveled to Serbia to adopt five-year-old Sophia. Oh. Sophia had spent much of her short life suffering neglect and abuse in Serbian orphanages. And she was autistic. Sophia is one of the most charming little girls. We fell in love with her right away. Chad and Casey already had three children. Their youngest, nine-year-old Seth, was also autistic. They wanted to use their experience to help a child unlikely to find adoptive parents. The first day we were with her, she hit us all and bit us all and pulled my hair and punched out our youngest son. Determined to give Sophia a better life, they brought her back to America. That first Christmas, she was writing and reading. It, it was just amazing. Jesus loves me, Messiah. We had great hope. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> So we had great hope that, you know, we kept saying, I can't wait to see where she's going to be in five years. Because at that point, I was convinced that our love would heal her. But over the next few years, Sophia became increasingly violent and uncontrollable. <laughs> the fall of 2013, she had an incident on a school bus where... She uh, she aggressed towards another student on the bus and got out of her seat and jumped on the, the, bus, the bus driver. And within a week or two, we were seeing it at home. And it, it's, it just increased and increased and increased to the point that we weren't even sure how to keep her safe. It's kind of the worst case scenario. We had to bring her to the ER twice. Oh, and my gosh. The last time where she had beat herself so bad. So her nose is busted and was bleeding and her lips were busted open and bleeding and gave herself black eyes and and then this is cleaned up after they cleaned up all the blood, but she had blood, you know, all over her face. It's estimated one in ten autistic children seriously self-harm. No one really knows why. Some theories link it to anxiety caused by an overload of sensory signals. Others to frustration. Autistic children can struggle to communicate. Behavioral disturbance is very common in children with autism and oftentimes is, is, is readily amenable to behavioral treatments, but um, sometimes those behaviors, they just can't be easily curtailed and can become quite dangerous for the child. Is she, is she aware that she's doing this? To so she is. It's like she's caught in the fight or flight mode. And so she's actually fighting, but she's fighting herself. And so afterwards, She's dealing with the pain from the injury that she just caused to herself, but she's also dealing with the sadness because she, you can tell, she realizes that she lost control. 
And she's upset that she hurt herself. When she was aggressing towards me, my instinct is, as a mom, I just want to grab her and hold her and hug her and wait. And she got so big and strong that I couldn't do that. In early 2016, for her own safety, Sophia had to leave home and go into a secure unit at the renowned Kennedy Krieger Institute for Brain Disorders. It often took three highly trained care staff using special techniques to prevent Sophia injuring herself and others. We've tried, you know, years of behavioral therapy, you know, years of uh, medication, and, and we've proven time and time again that for Sophia, these don't really work. So, you know, like every other mom dealing with any problem with their kids, I went to Google and said, <laughs> you know, Google. right, Dr. Google, um, autism self-injury treatment. And I started finding some articles on ECT. Casey came across author and campaigner Amy Lutz, whose own violently autistic son Jonah has had ECT for five years. 14 is always blue. 13 is always green. Mommy, wow. Well, ECT has been transformative for Jonah's life and for our life. I mean, we went from a period of time for, for years and years where Jonah was raging often multiple times a day, <coughs> ferociously. And the only reason he's able to be at home, that he's able to be with us here in Atlantic City, is only able to do that because of ECT. Amy runs a charity offering advice to parents in a similar position. And Casey has arranged to meet her. Nothing else that we've tried has given her enough improvement that we can keep her safe. So how can we not take that chance? Right, I think that's why for us ECT was not a hard decision. You know, so many people asked us, well, they asked us about the when we sent Joan to the Kennedy Krieger when he was nine and when we ended up getting ECT later. Wasn't that such a hard, hard decision? And for me, it was no, it was the only decision. So we went into it very enthusiastically because it provided some hope that we would be able to find something that might actually work after all these failed, you know, attempts. Many are far less enthusiastic. This hard-hitting campaign video is made by the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, a group founded by the Church of Scientology, who oppose most psychiatric treatment. Some human rights organizations call for a total ban, especially for children. Leading the fight against ECT is Dr. Peter Bregan, who's long campaigned against the psychiatric establishment. After seeing for myself the desperation of Sophia's situation, I want to know why he thinks ECT should never be an option. It's traumatic brain injury, TBI. The electricity not only travels through the frontal lobes, because that's where the electrodes are, and that's the seat of intelligence and thoughtfulness and creativity and judgment. It also goes through the temporal lobes, just the tip of the temporal lobes, a little further back, and that's the seat of memory. So you're blasting with an electric current the seat of memory. You're damaging the very expression of the personality, the character, the individuality, and even if you believe it, the expression of the soul. Jonah is heading into New York for his latest ECT session. He's one of just a few hundred self-injuring children to have the treatment since it was introduced a decade ago. With the long-term effects not known, its use on children is blocked in some countries and in a handful of US states. But Jonah's doctor is so convinced it's effective and safe, for the first time, he's allowing Amy and our cameras to witness it. I think almost all of the problem with ECT is misinformation, misunderstanding about what modern ECT is, and continued perpetuation of the sensationalist portrayals of the past. That's the problem. Nervous, Amy, about seeing ECT? I am you know, curious because I've wondered about it, but it's clearly not aversive to Jonah. He doesn't it, fight it. No, not at all. to lie back down on the bed for Lie down, Jonah. Jonah, I'm going to start putting some of these sticky pads on you, if that's okay. 
I'm going to clip this to your shirt here. Uh, okay. Donut. What's your name? Donut. When's your birthday? January. Jonah has had around 260 ECT sessions. The modern treatment is carried out under general anesthetic, with muscle relaxants to prevent violent convulsions. And we're doing bilateral electrode placement at 20%, low 0.5. Doctors admit they don't know exactly how ECT works. There's a lot of interesting new neuroimaging research showing that ECT actually reverses some of the brain problems in the major psychiatric illnesses. We don't exactly know why it works in people with autism and superimposed mood disorders, but we think it probably re-regulates the circuits in the brain that are dysregulated in these diseases. Dr. Kellner will administer just under an amp of electric current in a series of very short pulses. Impedance is good. Treating at 20%. the current induces a seizure. ECT specialists believe this, in some way, resets the malfunctioning brain. Any thoughts, Amy, now that you've seen it yourself? I mean, it is, it's not scary. You know, there is a little bit of movement. I mean, I've seen Jonah have a real grand mal seizure before, and that's way, way, way scarier. That's kind of what I was expecting. The ECT alleviates Jonah's self-injuring behavior for up to 10 days, but it's not a cure. It's generally very simple, safe, easy, quick procedure like that. There are still medical experts that are very skeptical that ECT actually does anything particularly for, for children like Jonah and that it, but it's cruel as well. well I, I think those are uneducated criticisms. And the way to counter them is to show people what modern ECT is really like and show them the results with patients like Jonah. What about long-term, though? Some doctors say that they can suffer memory loss. Well, we know a lot about long-term effects because there are patients with the more typical indications for ECT who have been getting maintenance ECT for many years, some for decades. And there really are no cumulative adverse effects of the treatment. So it seems to be very safe even to continue it for long periods. Worldwide, about a million people have ECT each year, most for severe, often life-threatening depression. Around 1% are under 18. Memory loss is the main side effect, though the severity, and even the definition, is hotly disputed. Studies by ECT doctors suggest most memory lapses are very short-term, with memory function soon returning to normal. Those against ECT have produced surveys showing more than half of patients suffer long-term memory loss. My life is shaded with lots of black holes, which represent the memories that were destroyed through the administration of electroshock. I don't remember my wedding day. I don't remember my husband putting a ring on my finger. When the person wakes up, they have all the signs, if they can speak, of traumatic brain injury. They may not know who they are or where they are or what's happened to them. A referee would stop a boxing match if the boxer got hit and looked like somebody coming out of ECT because they come out concussed. In Baltimore, Sophia has been in the Kennedy Krieger Neurobehavioral Unit for seven months and there's been little improvement. <laughs> Parents, Chad and Casey, are desperate to go ahead with ECT. But Dr. Wachtel wants to exhaust all other options first. We eat most of our kids who come to the MBU have, do not need ECT, and people rightfully so are, are cautious when it comes to children and to children with special needs. Okay. Beyond that, ECT is very much a treatment rather than a cure, so you get into the issue of needing ongoing ECT, which can become inconvenient, inexpensive. If we can avoid that, um, then we'd certainly like to offer something that's a little bit more manageable. We're not allowed to film in the secure unit. So I catch up with Casey after she visits Sophia. How was it? It was a rough day. A rough day? Yeah. When I got there, she had been, I don't even know what triggered it. She was in a big burst of behavior. It's heartbreaking and it scares me because I want to be able to bring her home. 
<laughs> I've cried a lot today because I don't know how we can bring her home. When I told people I was coming to America to make a film about children that get ECT, uh, people are shocked. They're like, that's barbaric, that, that's crazy. I, I wish that people who don't understand the need for ECT could spend a couple days with Sophia. This is where we are, we're at ECT. And I have to have hope that it's gonna be a miracle for Sophia because we need a miracle. A month later, Sophia's doctors give the go-ahead for ECT. Probably after the third or fourth treatment, um, we really started to see a marked improvement in her mood and an additional 30 to 40 percent reduction um, just in the sheer number of behaviors. Where are we going, Sophia? And in September, having been in the unit all year, Sophia is allowed home to live with her family. Sophia has been receiving intensive ECT for six months now. The family have relocated to Florida. The last time I visited the family, I couldn't go near Sophia for my safety and for her safety. Uh, so tonight's going to be quite an eye opener. Hello, hello, fellas. Hi, Sophia. Hi. I'm Chris. Hi. Hi. Can you shake his hand? Hello. Great to finally meet you. We've come a long way. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's his name? Do you remember? Mr. Chris. That's right. Ah, oh, should have told you about me. Good eye. Good eye. Sophia's had 33 sessions of ECT so far. Can I might have both right now? The family say they've seen a huge improvement. There you go. Look at me. Take a deep breath. I'm, I'm excited. When she has behaviors, they're much shorter, much less intense. She used to have bursts of behaviors where she was aggressing and hurting herself for hours. Now, it'll be a matter of a few minutes when she calm down. Hey, Mama! I need you right now. You got me, girl. When I return the next morning, there's quite a surprise. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Yeah, girl. You got it. Give it a shot. One, two, three, six. Yes. There you go. Each weekday, Sophia has school lessons with a specially trained carer. My biggest concern was that she was going to lose quality of life, that she would have brain damage. Okay. Now she's back to, you know, loving doing multiplication and division. Who's that? A dog. Yeah. When she started ECT, she was doing zero academic work at all. Good job. I did a Sophia through. <laughs> But later that afternoon, six days after her last ECT, Sophia's behavior deteriorates. Chad and her carer have to use approved restraint techniques to stop her injuring herself. Can I go to the beach? You know the answer to that? He said yes. No. What's sparked this? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I've taken any type of aggression. Usually towards like one or two days, day and a half prior to her usual schedule to ECT right. is usually what we see. Every Friday, Sophia leaves home at 6 a.m. for her weekly ECT session. I'm going to be safe. safe. First, Sophia's doctors were happy for us to film the ECT procedure today, but then there was a change of heart. The reason they've given us is that they're worried about how the procedure comes across on camera, particularly with Sophia, so that's it. We can't film inside the hospital. Two hours later, Sophia is on her way home. We got there within 45 minutes of 
treatment actually happening. Um, and she was sitting up in bed talking to two nurses asking for Starburst chapstick for her lips. The only memory loss that Sophia has had from ECT is that she forgets that the procedure happened. I was out Yeah, we are. Keep going. Okay, stop, stop. Oh. Okay, you gotta lick that part off. It's it's pretty dramatic. She's sharp as a tack. She she's absolutely sharp as a tack. ECT for severely self-injuring autistic children, like Sophia, is still in very limited use. And without a long-term scientific study, it remains highly controversial. Sophia, do you want to hold this? Right now, Sophia's parents have no regrets. They have their daughter back home. She's a joy. She brings us joy. And she loves life. And she had zero quality of life. What about the thought of ECT every single week for the rest of her life? It's overwhelming if I think about it, but what future did she have without it? My hope is she doesn't need it for the rest of her life. <laughs> but at this point, I see it as like a diabetic needing insulin. It's, it keeps her alive, literally, it keeps her alive. And it, it makes it possible for us to be able to have her in our home, living life with our family and Enjoying Sophia. under an amp of electric current in a series of very short pulses. Impedance is good. Treating at 20%. The current induces a seizure. ECT specialists believe this in some way resets the malfunctioning brain. Any thoughts, Amy, now that you've seen it yourself? I mean, it is... It's not scary. You know, there is a little bit of movement. I mean, I've seen Jonah have a real grand mal seizure before, and that's way, way, way scarier. That's kind of what I was expecting. The ECT alleviates Jonah's self-injuring behavior for up to 10 days, but it's not a cure. It's generally a very simple, safe, easy, quick procedure like that. There are still medical experts that are very skeptical that ECT actually does anything particularly for, for... Under an amp of electric current in a series of very short pulses. Impedance is good. Treating at 20%. The current induces a seizure. ECT specialists believe this in some way resets the malfunctioning brain. Any thoughts, Amy, now that you've seen it yourself? I mean, it is... it's not scary. You know, there is a little bit of movement. I mean, I've seen Jonah have a real grand mal seizure before, and that's way, way, way scarier. That's kind of what I was expecting. The ECT alleviates Jonah's self-injuring behavior for up to 10 days. But it's not a cure. It's generally a very simple, safe, easy, quick procedure like that. There are still medical experts that are very skeptical that ECT actually does anything particularly for, for children like Jonah and that, it, that it's cruel as well. well I, I think those are uneducated criticisms and the way to counter them is...